So give me the faith to finish the race. Look it up, got my eyes on you. I'll follow your lead, whatever it takes. Give it up, give it all for you. I won't worry about tomorrow. Cause I know that you know where I'm going. Hello, and welcome to our next installment of Wednesday's Word. I'm Pastor Dom Aquilino, and Merry Christmas to you and to your families. Please turn with me, if you would, to Galatians chapter 4 as we discuss today the fullness of time in which Jesus was born. In Galatians chapter 4, starting in verse 4, it says this, But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. I love these two verses. In fact, these two verses are one of my favorite Christmas texts of all. Um, To remind ourselves that the birth of Jesus Christ happened in real time, in history, and with a specific purpose. And so notice the first thing he says here in verse 4 is he says, when the fullness of time came. Whenever I approach this passage, I automatically think of Charles Dickens in his A Tale of Two Cities where he said it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. That's a pretty accurate assessment of the times in which Jesus was born. The first thing you need to realize is that religiously it wasn't a good time. The people of God, the people of Israel, had really fallen into legalism and Phariseeism. And because of that, the truth was waning just under the weight of their traditions. Politically, it was also a really hard time for the Jewish people. They were under Roman rule. They were slaves to Caesar. And so because of that, they weren't free to really pursue God the way they should have. And so some would say it's the worst time for a Messiah, a king, to come. But in a different sense, it was the perfect time. Now, politically, along with Roman oppression, there was what was called the Pax Romana, that is the Roman peace. And since the Roman Empire had everybody under their thumb, at least the message could spread to the entire empire. But it's important to remember that the timing was perfect simply because God sovereignly ordained that that's when it would happen. And so what happened? In verse 4 it tells us, it says, But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son. Now notice how he describes this, how Paul describes this in these verses. The first thing he says is this, born of a woman. Now we have to ask, why say that? I mean, obviously he was born of a woman. Every human being, with the exception of Adam and Eve, were born of a woman. What's his point? Well, his point seems to be his humanity. Jesus was really born. Now, when we're driving around, we'll see a lot of decorations outside people's homes that might have Jesus and Mary and Joseph in it. But I wonder how many people really understand and really believe that Jesus was and is a real human being. Paul didn't want to leave that unsaid, so he tells us that Jesus was born of a woman. The second thing he says is that Jesus was born under the law. Now, why say that? to remind us of Jesus' humility. Jesus was born under a system that required perfect obedience, and he was perfectly obedient. He chose the strictest time to come and to become a human being for us. We remember his humanity. We remember his humility and But then notice what verse 5 says, so that he might redeem those who were under the law. This shows us his heart. Jesus became a real human being in order to redeem us, to buy us back from the punishment that our sins deserve. He came to become a real human being in order to deliver us from the punishment that we deserve. That's his heart. And finally, it says this, the latter part of verse 5, that, he might receive, that we might receive the adoption as sons. This shows us our hope. Jesus, who is God, became a real human being, lived a real human life, and he lived at a certain time in history in order to 
redeem us from our sinfulness and to adopt us as the blood-bought sons of God. Now, how does this lead us to prayer then? Well, first of all, we are in the best of times and we are in the worst of times. It's easy to look around and say that this is a, a dark spot in our history, and maybe it is. But it is what God has determined. He is in control. And so let that drive us to prayer. Ask Him for strength uh, for the day when we need it, but also that, that we might ask Him for submission to Him. Secondly, some people have no concept of who Jesus is apart from the decorations they see this time of year. Let's remind ourselves to be driven to prayer for the people around us who do not yet know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Maybe, just maybe, it's the fullness of time for them. Let's pray.